Okay. Welcome, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me, Brian and Paul. So, everyone, this is a uh, a really quick intro um, into a brand new course that we're bringing out uh, within Enterprise DNA's uh, Learning Center. And this is all about geospatial analysis. And so with me today is uh, Paul LaCasson, who uh, has a wealth of experience in this particular area. And we um, are really grateful that he has partnered with us to create a comprehensive course diving into all aspects of geospatial analysis. This is something that has been requested uh, so many times through our current user base and, and, and membership uh, and community um, within Enterprise DNA. So you know, can't, uh, can't be more excited about introducing this and, and finally releasing this um, to, to all those with access to our platform. So with that, Paul, I'll just throw to you and um, maybe just if you could just give a little bit um, more background about your experience and, and, why, um, and, and why you and how you've got it sort of um, this uh, angle of you know, high quality geospatial analysis inside of Power BI and why you started doing it in Power BI and the benefits you, you, you have seen, et cetera. Okay. Well, you know, as you know, I'm uh, working as a uh, logistics uh, consultant, uh, predominantly working in the supply chain solutions for both shipping companies and manufacturers. And as such, I've always been using GIS software and found that I would like to do something more in Power BI because obviously it's much more dynamic than a more static picture that you get from the, the likes like the Maptitude and the SREs that I uh, have been using. So subsequently, I started to develop a number of projects for my customers associated with creating more dynamic mapping. And I came across a number of things that are now the topics in the course. And when I was asked by Brian, he got me into this, to do a, a course, which was obviously challenging and exciting at the same time. I first thought about doing the general stuff like showing how do I create a map, which visuals are available, but pretty soon I realized that would be rather boring. So I decided to take a number of my uh, projects and, and the experience that I took from those projects and try to convert them into more simple examples of what you can achieve by using a few techniques. And subsequently we've got a number of solutions, if you like, for certain problems that they came across in real life and hopefully they will contribute to the toolbox of people working with uh, geospatial uh, data. And hopefully it will trigger other people as well to consider what they could do with maps more than the, the auth visual that they display. And uh, hopefully in the fight against pie charts, start to use more maps. <laughs> anything, anything that gets us using fewer pie charts is good, Paul. <laughs> yeah. That's really great. And, and I think I, and, and why this is um, going to be so great to be part of um, the rest of our, our, our content we already have is that I think that a big part of geospatial analysis and Power BI is that most don't even know the potential. And I presume that via the, um, you know, with the content you've created, you know, you, you really actually do showcase the potential quite, um, you know, with, with, with some creative analysis and creative visualizations. And so maybe um, it would be great just to touch upon some of those examples. Yes. Well, there's a number, of course. Uh, the first one is probably the Huff gravity analysis, where we calculate the attractiveness of uh, people visiting supermarkets based on distance and the, uh, the square feet of the stores. And I've added a model to it where we can actually influence the size of the store to see whether that has impact or not. Uh, there's another one about calculating the center of gravity, which is important in terms of looking at where are my customers and do I have a warehouse or do I have parcel lockers and where should they be? Uh, there's an example using well-known text to uh, display routes or a gas grid in this case. I've taken two examples. Uh, there's another one where I do a distance calculation, but also a bearing in terms of which direction is the distance and which is the shortest distance. And would it not be better to uh, take a probably longer distance, but at the same time in, the, in a better direction given to where I want to be? Uh, so there's a wide variety of applications and it's truly location intelligence. And uh, as you said, uh, there is demand. 
And hopefully people will be triggered because I'm quite sure that many of our members will have their own solution, which they have built over years. Mm. And probably it will trigger them to uh, share their ideas as well. Mm. Oh, I have no doubt this is going to be enlightening for everyone, even you know, even even myself, I mean, and, and, and intrigued and am and, and enlightened around what you can actually achieve, just generally with geospatial, but then with location intelligence inside of Power BI, and that is that is one of the most um, exciting things about uh, about um, showcasing this, this 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 sort of content. Brian, do you have any? Um, you've you've gone through the course a number of times already. I have, yeah. Uh, that, you've enjoyed it, so. Maybe maybe um, you can um, come in here and and, and give uh, give an outline of, of of what you think is great about about the content. Well, you know, there's there's a whole range of things. You know, I think as Paul said that rather than you know kind of hypothetical examples, he he really bases it in real life business applications. And in addition, I mean, he's got a really clear methodical teaching style that even if you're not familiar with these concepts, he makes them really, really crystal clear and easy to understand. And the, the great thing about it is that with each module comes the PBIX file. And so you can take and go through the module and kind of, kind of incorporate Paul's instruction and then really delve in and kind of deconstruct the the analysis that he's done in kind of piece by piece in the PBIX file. And that kind of gets to my question, Paul, is, you know, what, what do you think the best way for people to go through this? I mean, given the fact that I think many of us are not familiar with a lot of the, the concepts that you're going to be covering in this, is it best you think to go through the course kind of once straight through and kind of get the general overview and then kind of module by module go back or, should do you think it's best for people to work through and kind of detailed module deconstruct then on to the next concept? Yeah, it's difficult to say, Brian, because uh, what I've tried to do is uh, indeed uh, add examples plus the supporting uh, Excel sheets so people can start from scratch and just follow along. Uh, other people might probably find that they have come across a certain issue which they haven't resolved yet and find a solution and build on it. So hopefully that will trigger uh, more people indeed to uh, uh, put more time in a proper mapping and proper location intelligence. But the way to go through the course is I guess based on follow the first uh, two videos and see what you think of it and then start working around the, uh, the issues of, as I present them and how I resolve them. It's not rocket science, you know, it's basically an, a, a bit of clear thinking and using the, uh, the right formulas. But formulas like for distance, for instance, are, are given. So it's more a matter of applying it in an analysis and making sure that the customer, because eventually we all do it for a customer, is happy with the result and is able to analyze the data that he has presented to us. Yeah, and I really like, I really like the way you've structured it where you go through, for example, the distance and bearing, and then you've got two other sections that go through practical applications of how to use that. And I, I think it, it really, the course just really nicely builds on, on each, each module. One of the things I wanted to ask is, you know, you go through a range of different uh, geospatial visuals. So the, the native ones within Power BI, as well as some of the, the really sophisticated ones like Icon Map um, that are custom visuals with really kind of extensive customization capabilities. And I'm wondering kind of where you see this headed in the future. Do you see that kind of the sophisticated stuff is going to be in the custom visuals or do you see kind of with each subsequent release of Power BI and kind of the improvement of the native visuals that eventually that kind of becomes the dominant way we do this? Yeah, definitely. I think Icon Map is here to stay. It's a really good one. And it's very versatile in terms of uh, being able to apply whatever you like from standard data to latitude, longitude, to well-known text. Uh, but for instance, the Azure map visual is very promising indeed. And actually in the last, uh, uh, the last upgrade, they've uh, added more about distance as well. So I think that probably Microsoft are really working on getting that uh, to be one of the better 
uh, mapping visuals available. Shape map is nice, but has been in preview for ages. So at some point, I would expect that Azure Map will probably get and inherit all the good things in the Shape Map visual, and that will probably then be uh, be uh, discontinued because it has been in, in preview now for about three years, which is unreal actually. So we'll have to see, but I think definitely Azure Map is there to stay. The ArcGIS Map uh, Azure is quite good now. Uh, it's much more uh, able to share also online. And it has a number of good opportunities for showing boundaries like postcodes. So for many people, if they have postcodes and they postcode data, and they do not have the ability to create their own shape files, the, the Azure visual is quite good in representing that. So there are a number that I have a preference for. I like Mapbox, given that in Mapbox, you can do a lot with building your own maps, but I'm quite sure that many people are not really interested in building their own shapes. And they would basically just prefer to uh, take something from the shelf and uh, display their data. It's really, it's really amazing kind of what you can do just off the shelf these days, you know, as we've talked about, and I actually, in the intro video um, to the Huff Gravity Analysis, I show some of the work that, that I've done based on what I've learned from your course and you, and it, it really is amazing kind of what's just out there free on the internet. And still developing, as, as you know, I'm uh, very keen on developing in R as well. Uh, so that's a complete new door opening for us, I think, in terms of applying this also in uh, spatial analysis. Yeah, agreed. I think tremendous potential there. Mm. Yeah, I think one of the most exciting things here with, with this particular content is really um, touches upon a theme that, that I've, I've, I've been uh, covering quite, quite a lot now, especially with the Analytic Mind podcast and that as, a, as an analyst, as someone using Power BI, you almost need to be an artist. You need to be creative. You need to think outside the box. And I think a lot of this geospatial analysis is not something that everyone is totally familiar with. And it really comes down to inspiring your creativity, which I, I certainly believe we will do with this particular course. And then I think a world of analysis opportunities open up in front of you. And you know, just by understanding what what type of um, custom visual maps that you have available to you ways that you can you know bring together just some things that are around the internet and, and bring them into power bi and create some interesting analysis on top of that i mean i i just love the the idea of bringing multiple things together um all into the centerpiece of a power bi report and then being able to deliver such high quality insights and and, and you know there's no doubt in my mind that this is this is going to be um, a big inspiration for, for many around um, you know, lo location intelligence, like you said. Absolutely. In my working environment, <clears throat> I come across many people asking me about displaying their data, uh, analyzing the flows, uh, looking at the supply chain in general, or do a complete network analysis. And I find that just with a few maps and a few clicks, you can display so much and you cannot simply put it into a number of pivot tables or whatever you use. Uh, I do not use PowerPoint at all. I have one slide, and that is just to present what I'm telling. And then I go on live into a Power BI document. And then you can display everything and really and truly show what location intelligence is all about. So that is, again, always exciting because every, every time, again, it's still new. And every project that you eventually end up with and this and and then uh, present to the customer is uh, is is new and is always exciting for a customer to see because they are not aware what is disclosed in their information. Yeah, Paul, you use in your in your in your course. There's a phrase disclosing the unexpected, which I loved, and I think there there's in a sense no better service you can provide than telling somebody something about their data that they don't know, and I think. The way you've done that in the geospatial visuals and analysis just jumps out in terms of, you know, these are insights that for the examples you work through, I, I really couldn't imagine getting any other way. Yeah. But as I say, it's all, it's all about my experience. So it's over the years that I've built experience and amalgamated that with the Power BI ability of displaying things. So, uh, Yes, I think 
the, uh, the, the, the power that is in, inside the uh, business intelligence tools that we have today, combined with the mapping ability, is something very, very powerful. And Paul, what would you say just in terms of kind of prerequisite, like what, what level of what level of skill do you think people need in order to really take advantage of this course? Well, you know, if the, a standard analyst would be able to deal with this and, and, and take this uh, one step further, because these are examples that you can use and then you can build on them. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that because they are from real life, that people will come across issues like this. And this is a way to resolve them. And there are many ways because we all know that you can do many things in many different ways in Power BI. But in terms of mapping, this truly is a way of doing it the way I've done it and the way it has proven successful. And so you would say just kind of basic intermediate DAX and Power Query would be more than sufficient? Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. It may, it may seem intimidating always when it's something new, but for many people already facing uh, logistics data, and let's face it, 80% of data is holding a geographic uh, component. So most people will be facing uh, the ability or the requirement to, uh, to display something uh, in, in a geographical way. So, you know, it's almost natural for people to turn onto a map if they know how to do it and if it's displayed properly, they will learn from it and, and they will develop themselves. It's a learning curve, which is quite easy to pick up. That's great. Yeah, that is, that's fantastic. And um, yeah, I've no doubt that, um, that we, we're really, we're really um, adding to the, the tool set here for, for all of those um, with, uh, with access to the platform. So um, yeah, I, 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 I'm uh, really excited to, to you know, see, see what our, our, our community can, can um, come up with and, and, and when leveraging off the content produce and, and things like the challenges and, 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 and other collaborative, um, collaborative uh, things that we do within, within the community. So I, uh, I don't have any more questions on my side. What about, what about yourself, uh, Brian? No, I think that's it. I just really want to thank Paul for the, the effort and energy and expertise that went into this. I think, I think it's a real winner. Yeah, it was and a Paul, pleasure to do. <laughs> any, 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 any last thoughts uh, from yourself, Paul, on the, on the course? No, I'm just excited to see it now uh, come into action, and I'm looking forward to the responses. Yeah, great. No, well, thank you so much for uh, your efforts and in, in putting it together, and uh, and for partnering um, with, with us on it. And you know, I have absolutely no doubt that everyone is going to get such tremendous value from from just your, you know, your, just your one, one course module here. So, um, you know, and then, and then when you factor in all the other things that, uh, that are available within the entire platform, it's, um, you know, uh, tr it's, it, it's, it's truly um, great what, you know, what, what we've been able to bring together here. So, you know, really great to uh, be able to add your, your flavor um, to, to Enterprise DNA's content, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks all. And, uh, you know, Please jump in. Um, it's going to be released on our in our learning center, which is at portal.enterprisedna.co. Uh, it will be released around this video um, that we we release on YouTube and, and throughout the site. So yeah, jump into it. Um, you you are going to get a lot out of it. So thanks again, Paul, and uh, thanks for joining us today, Brian. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.